I got a question today about measuring from an alternate coordinate system relative to a, an alternate coordinate system. And so I wanted to show uh, how we can do this. This has actually been part of the measure command from the beginning, um, from NX12 when we released this one. Uh, but uh, apparently there's a question. <laughs> so, uh, so let's do this. Uh, what we want to do is measure some locations of these holes here relative to the center, right? This part was constructed with that origin not at the center there, right? So we don't want to measure from this origin, but we want to measure from the center here um, relative to, again, to a coordinate system that would be at the center, okay? And we can do that. Um, this is the WCS down here. We could move the WCS up to the center, right, and do that and come in here and choose to measure relative to the WCS. That works. Um, the challenge with this is that the WCS is transient, right? The WCS doesn't have a permanent location up here. And so we, we're not going to create persistent measurements or save measurements as an expression, for instance, if we're measuring relative to the WCS, right? So for instance, if we, um, we back out of there, grab the WCS here and say, I want the center of that WCS to come up here to the center of the circle, I can do that, right? That'll put the WCS, the work coordinate system up there. And now if we measure and come in and say, I want to measure relative to the WCS, uh, we can do that, right? We can come and say, I want to grab um, some points up here and say, grab this center point. And this will tell me now that it's out there at 75 relative to the WCS and 0, 0. This is, this is up on top of the, the plate there. Um, so that's, that's what we expect. But you'll notice that this is disabled, right? And again, as the message says here, this is saying that, that, that saving this is not supported when that reference ses, CSIS is set to, to, to WCS, right? Um, because again, that WCS is not saved there, right? The WCS is a transient thing. So we don't want to create persistent expressions um, against a, a transient object, right? So what we can do here, uh, let's let's cancel out of here and back up one. I'm going to put the WCS back in the uh, the global origin there. We can just measure relative to a different coordinate system up here, and that's okay. So I want to create a persistent coordinate system there, a new datum CSIS up there. I'm going to use this method. Uh, with an origin and an X and a Y axis here. So the origin point will choose that center up there. And again, I'm gonna choose on top of the part, right? The, the global is down here on the bottom. This one's gonna be up on the top. So our Z uh, orientation or location here is gonna be different. Uh, for the X axis, our global X is kind of horizontal here, right? And so let's, let's choose this to be rotated. So I'll choose that as X and this one as Y. So our, our orientation here is kind of clocked 90 degrees relative to the original and moved up in Z here, okay? So that's our, our new location. And so that gives us a new datum coordinate system feature over here with our new orientation, right? Now what we can do is we can measure relative to that one. So for instance, if I measure right now, and say, come and choose the center point of this hole over here, right? Um, right now, that's doing it relative to the global zero here, which is out there at 175 uh, and 130. So this is 175 out here in X, clear over here, uh, 100 up, which makes sense, because uh, that's how big it is. And then the 30 and Z there, of course, is the difference here between this, this origin and the thickness of this, of this little plate right here, right? Um, now, you'll notice that there's a hint down here, right? And the hint says that for relative point measurement here, select or define a CSIS, right? Using the CSIS option. So we can choose to use a CSIS here and select another CSIS. And we can come in here in the middle. I'm gonna come and make sure we grab the actual coordinate system object here, right? Um, you, you might notice my, my cursor is staying at the center right here. I'm using the mouse wheel over here to, to get to that object from the quick pick. And then I can just select again with the same left button here, primary MB1 mouse button, and it'll select that coordinate system. So we've got that coordinate system now in our list. And now you'll notice that this measurement has changed and says now that it's at uh, zero in X and negative 75 in Y and zero and Z, right? 
So that's this relative to this coordinate system that we just selected. So if we bring that around, we square that up even, um, we can see this a little bit more clearly now, right? It's in zero and X, negative 75 and Y, and zero and Z, because it's sitting on the top of, of this, uh, this plate, okay? So that's kind of cool. Um, and, and if we want to here as well, we can say we want to measure a bunch of things from a reference object, right? Um, if we if we leave this how this is, it's going to use that point one as the reference object, and uh, and then come and, and look at some other stuff here. Uh, but if we come and, and select one of these other circles, for instance, we'll start to get a minimum distance from that point, right? That's not really what we're after, right? What we really want to do is measure everything relative to the coordinate system. So if we put the coordinate system first in this reference object thing, we'll move that to the top of the list then we'll see what we're after here, right? Each of those points now, we've got a coordinate relative to our first object, relative to that coordinate system up there. So if we grab this uh, this one up here as well, um, that one, oops, let me, that's, that ceases too. <laughs> I, I reselected uh, the coordinate system there, which is not what I wanted. Let's do that. There we go. So for a new point here, there we go. We've got this guy. So here we can see this one, as we would expect, is at x equals zero, y is at 75. Here's the negative 75, right? It's one opposite across the, the circle. And then these two are sitting out here at the 30 degrees and negative 30 degrees positions, right? So if you remember that that sign of, of 30 is 0.5, right? This 37 and a half is, is half of our, our 75, as we would expect here, okay? So that's pretty cool. Um, so again, select the, the coordinate system in the measure command to get that relative measurement. And we can do that for a single point if we want to, or we can use the, the from reference object method here to, uh, to do multiple points, again, relative to a new coordinate system. Oh, and with this method, because that coordinate system is a persistent object, um, all of these can also be persistent, right? We can create associative measurements here because we're doing that associative measurement between a persistent object, that, that datum coordinate system feature, and the, the location on the model, right? And of course, we can do that for all of them at the same time if we want to uh, in there, okay? So I hope that is helpful.